back, everyone. This is another episode of the Exodus Project, and today I'm going to do a quick little presentation on the church father called Justin Martyr. Um, but before we get started, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications, and you know, give me a big thumbs up if you like what I'm doing here. Uh, so yeah, another big reason I left Christianity was church father's writings, right? So not not that I even accepted the church fathers, but so much even Protestant post-Reformation tradition was Catholic. And the more I, the more I began to realize that and come to the understanding that the things the, the church was doing, whether it be, you know, Lutheranism or as far, as far into the Reformation and Restoration doctrine as I was in Pentecost, um, so much tradition, you know, stemmed from the Catholic practice and the Church Fathers. And it was really a pick-or-choose game. So, um, yeah, I really started digging into the Church Fathers' writings, and it brought me to a fellow named Justin Martyr, and we're going to actually see a little bit about, you know, what he talks about. Um, he was really the first apologist. Uh, and I'll give you a little background on Justin Martyr. He was born a pagan to pagan parents, heathen, Roman, um, converted to Christianity, and the things he saw in Christianity, the tropes and the, the um, you know, the doctrines, the stories, all of that, he was accustomed to it. He saw it, he understood all that same worldview as a pagan, and then devoted his life to combating pagans. That was, I mean, you also have the, the um, dialogue with Trifo, who is a Jew. But for the most part, everything in his apologies are going after, you know, pagan apologists, really. Poly polytheistic Greco-Roman um, apologists who were attacking Christianity. And his main, his main argument was called the diabolic mimicry argument. Which basically is stating that um, the devil took true, true prophecies or true things and warped them into paganism, and that Christianity brought it back. So, <clears throat> as we know, uh, Hasatan, the Satan, he is the emissary for God who tempts us, and then. Uh, accuses us for it, right? He's the prosecuting attorney, um, the evil inclination, etc. So to say that he is going about and stealing prophecies or stealing biblical truths and reworking them into paganism, well, it just doesn't hold water when we understand the true Satan in the Tanakh. But let's get into Justin Martyr's um, writings, and we'll actually see he can pay, he concedes pagan connection. So let's do it. First point, and this is a direct quote, and it says, When we say that the Word, who is the first birth of God, was produced without sexual union, and that He, Jesus Christ, our teacher, was crucified and died, and He rose again and descended into heaven, we propound nothing different from what you believe regarding those who you esteem sons of Jupiter. That's the 21st Apology. So, there you have it, straight out. You know, sons of Jupiter, right? sons of Zeus. You know, Perseus, Hercules, um, you know, that list goes on. Hercules was, or uh, Zeus or Jupiter, he was <laughs> impregnating everybody, you know what I mean? Um, so really what, they're, what he's using as his foundational argument against the pagan is that, you know, just like you believe Jupiter or Zeus impregnates a woman... Um, what, uh, I can't think of her, what her name was. Uh, I believe that's Perseus's mother was impregnated by having gold coins sprinkled over her. So not even through the act of sex, you know. So he is he's using that to back up his argument that Jesus is born no differently than how you believe the children of Jupiter are born. So as you can see, he's he's his pagan origins, his pagan worldview upbring is shining through here, and he's actually using this to convert people. Basically saying, you know, our belief is so close to yours, 
that if you convert to Christianity, you're really making no change, right? It's just the it's just that the <laughs> the names of the characters change, right? Okay. For when they say that Dionysus, who was the god of the vine, god of wine, when they say that Dionysus arose again and ascended to heaven, it is not evidence is it not evidence the devil has imitated the prophecy? Okay, so there I have the diabol diabolic mimicry argument. So, as you can see here, you know, Dionysus, Bacchus is going to come up next. Bacchus is just the Thracian name for Dionysus, basically the same deity. Um, God of wine, you know, that's, that's Dionysus turned water into wine, rose again, ascended to heaven. You know, you can see that the the tropes, the stories are all just being retold with different names. But here we see that diabolic mimicry. He's saying that the devil took the truth and put it into the minds of someone else and created this story. You know, but how does this work when the Greek pantheon, which Dionysus is from, predates Christianity by, you know, hundreds of years, thousands of years possibly? You know, so how in the world, that's, it's basically like saying that the pagan religions have the prophecies of what the <laughs> true Messiah is going to be like, right? If the truth is being warped in the minds of the non-Jewish, the non-Jewish stories, that they're taking truth and pulling it far off away from what the truth actually is, you know, it's, it's basically like saying that only the non-Jews are going to get it, and you know, I really believe that's where Justin Martyr is coming from, is these Jesus stories are so similar that the devil just warped your story a little bit and made you pagan, but now, you know, you see the truth. Disregarding Tanakh. Do you know what I mean? So, this diabolic mimicry argument is just, it's very weak, um, especially on behalf of the fact that all of these stories predate Jesus' story. So, let's keep going. And here we go, Bacchus. For when they tell that Bacchus, son of Jupiter, was begotten by Jupiter, Jupiter's intercourse with Semele, and that he was the discoverer of the vine, as I said, this is just a different name for Dionysus, this is the Thracian version, uh, which, was, which is like modern-day Bulgaria. And when they relate that being torn in pieces and having died, he rose again and ascended to heaven, and when they introduce wine into his mysteries, do I not perceive that the devil has imitated the prophecy? announced by the Patriarch Jacob, and recorded by Moses. Same thing. He's going right... He's It's it's a complete retelling of the Jesus story, really, right? Mind you, these, these Bacchus myths, these Dionysus myths, these all predate Christianity by hundreds of years. And, you know, we have this... We have this um, Son of God rhetoric, you know, Jupiter is the father, Jupiter is the, you know, Zeus, the, the highest god in the pantheon, right? And he's making all these demigods with mortal women, right? Discover of the vine, you know, we're getting right back to that grape idea, you know, water to wine, that's very much in the Dionysus cult, Bacchus cult. Um, and then being torn to pieces, scourged. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but very similar. Dies, rises again, and ascends to heaven. It matches the Jesus. And like I said, this this is a Christian apologist reiterating these myth stories. So it's not like I'm just making this stuff up. You know, you can look these up if you want to. These are direct quotes from Justin Martyr's writings. Um, and then when he's when they would drink wine to honor this deity. So that's what he's saying here. When they introduce wine into his mysteries, do I not perceive that the devil has imitated the prophecy announced by the patriarch Jacob and recorded by Moses? So he's trying to equate prophecies from Tanakh saying that, you know, the Messiah, Jesus, is this fulfillment of, of um, you know, the Torah, right? That he's the Torah in flesh, etc. Um, it's it's this diabolic mimicry argument everywhere, basically saying that you know all these all these truths 
were just warped in the eyes of the pagans, as if these as if these writings were given to the Greeks or the Romans to begin with, right? These these prophecies, the Tanakh, was written in Hebrew and you know written to the Jews by the Jews for the Jews, right? So these weren't these mystery cults and these pagan religions. They weren't basing anything off the Tanakh. And that's the point I'm really trying to get at here on how weak this mimicry argument is. Um, Hasatan, these Greeks and Romans didn't even believe in that character. You know, they didn't, they didn't know or think of this guy. You know, why would, they, why would they care about anything it says in the holy book of someone who's a vassal to them? They don't care. That's, that's one of their subordinates, right? So they had their own religions. So, saying that because these truths were warped in the minds of non-Jews, and that created these mystery cult religions that predate Christianity, just so that Christianity would be evident to those exact people, that's just, it's such circular reasoning, and as far as apolog apologetics goes, it makes absolutely no sense, and it falls flat on its face. But this is, this is a, a church father conceding that the Jesus narrative, the Gospels, are in direct correlation with Greco-Roman pagan mythologies, right? He's, he's saying that it was warped, but he's, he's conceding that they are the exact same retelling of the same story. Okay, and these things were said both among the Greeks and among all nations where they in parentheses, the demons, heard the prophets foretelling that Christ would specially be believed in, but that in hearing what was said by the prophets, they did not accurately understand it, understand it, but imitated what was said of our Christ, like men who are in error, we will make plain. Okay, so now he's, now he's coming with the, now he's coming with the position, <clears throat> um, that demons, devils, were hearing the prophets foretelling Christ, right? Though we obviously know Christ isn't in the prophets anywhere. Um, saying that demons were hearing the, hearing the prophecies. Um, but he's, he's equating these demons to the Greeks and the nations, right? And saying that their mystery cults are coming from the hearing of the real prophecies and then there being a misunderstanding and they're being warped. You know, like I said, diabolic mimicry. I'm going to be saying that a lot because it's, it's the baseline argument in every single one of these quotes. Um, but this one, this one's kind of different because he's not equating, he's not specifically bringing out a, a, a myth here, he's not bringing out a mystery story here, but rather, he's saying that the nations heard the prophecies. The Greeks and the other nations heard the prophecies and just misunderstood them and made up their own stories. But, you know, how true is that? You know, were the prophets of Israel writing to Greece? Were the prophets of Israel writing to Egypt? Were the prophets of Israel writing to you know, Babylon, there are references to those nations in there about their downfalls and that kind of thing. But the prophets of Israel were speaking to Israel and Judah. They were there to give prophecy to their own people in Hebrew, some Aramaic. So to use this argument is just, it's, it's so out there and really has no basis whatsoever. Okay, and finally, for the apostles, in the memoirs composed by them, which are called the Gospels, have thus delivered unto us what was enjoined upon them, that Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, said, This do ye remembrance of me, this is my body. And you find that in Luke, Matthew. And that after the same manner, having taken the cup and given thanks, he said, This is my blood, and gave it to them alone, which the wicked devils have imitated in the mysteries of Mithras, commanding the same thing that to be done. For that bread and a cup of water are placed with certain incantations in the mystic rites of one who is being initiated. You either know or can learn. 
Okay, so here he's equating to the Mithras cult. Everyone, most people I know that are students of comparative religion are very aware of the similarities between Christianity and Mithraism. Um, but it's funny that he only quotes Mithras when we actually know that there were, there was uh, a communion type right as far back as the Osiris cult in ancient Egypt, but that's that's predating Christianity, you know, by 1500, probably almost 2,000 years, you know? So, but as far as Mithras, um, Mithras was very, very venerated, uh, very much a greatly worshipped and revered deity in Tarsus, which is where um, Paul's from. So there's there's no... So Paul's worldview, his mind... And let's not forget that Tarsus was like the central hub of Greek thought in Asia Minor at the time. Tarsus was in modern-day Turkey. You know, so let's not forget that his worldview is steeped in Greek thinking. Greco-Roman ideas, you know, the Greco-Roman pantheon. Um, and then the Mithras cult. You know, that would be what he is used to. He would be used to seeing the Mithras rite of, you know, the bread and water, you know, with the incantations and the different rites, this, this ritual, the Mithras communion, right? So it's no, it's no surprise that when Paul is writing Corinthians, he includes that. Because every time we are just seeing a rehashing. So... For just a martyr to always say that it's just, oh, it's the devil. Oh, it's the devil. He's he's taking the truth and then taking something that predates it, creating a cult just so, you know, moving forward you'll be able to understand that it was actually a prophecy about Jesus. You know, that's just, it's so circular. Right? Our earliest writings are Paul, and he's, that's where we first find the communion in, in 1 Corinthians. So if this Mithras rite actually predates that, you know, what is just the martyr even talking about? You know, it's just such an off off base argument that the devils are warping everything and renaming everything and causing everyone to under misunderstand the truth and that the rites you're doing are just going to lead up to your understanding of Christ. What that's saying is is paganism is just a warped version of Christianity. And not vice versa. It's a, it's a, it's conceding. It's just it, it's flipping around the timeline, right? However you chalk this up, it has nothing to do with Judaism and everything to do with paganism. It's just flip flopping the timeline. You know, so you're just really seeing all these pagan worldviews, Justin Martyrs especially, and like I said here, Paul's, and even even the um. Even the apostles, right? Was it a Passover Seder? We don't know. If if the story actually happened, maybe. Um, but we're definitely getting this from Paul because this do you in remembrance of me, that's first found in Corinthians, right? So Paul never met Jesus. Paul never met him. He only had a quote-unquote spiritual vision. So... Who's to say he didn't see Mithras? You know what I mean? That's where his mind would have already been at. His worldview was that of Tarsus, Greece, the Mithras cult. You know, it says he was a Roman citizen. How would he have gotten that? If his father was a if his father was a born citizen of Tarsus, yeah, Roman Empire. You could be a Roman citizen. We also find in the New Testament that he was a kinsman to the Herodian family. You know, so and they're Edomites. So really, where is where is his worldview? It's definitely not that of Tanakh. I'm getting a little off topic here, but I'll, I'll bring it right back. But he says, you know, it wasn't until I, it wasn't until I discovered the law that I realized that I was a sinner. Well, if you were raised in a Pharisaic home, what about the law were you discovering? You should have been taught this from birth. Why would you have to discover it to show you that you're a sinner? You know, so he kind of, he kind of tells on himself that, that's not his worldview. That's not the background he comes from. But what we do see between his communion rhetoric, his spiritual body rhetoric, 
um, his transcendent self, you know, the transcendent man, the spiritual body. What we do see from that is Greek, Greek Roman, you know, Tarsus. You know, we're seeing the that that was the hub of Greek thinking. We're seeing that worldview coming through, and not that of a Pharisaic Jew, right? So I hope this helps everybody. I hope this kind of shows that even the church fathers. You know, Justin Martyr is, he's very well known. His apologies, his, uh, his um, dialogue with Trifo, all very well known literature as, as the church fathers go. But when you read through these quotes, you can't help but notice that he's conceding that the stories are the same. There is overlap. He just has to explain, explain that away by saying, oh, well, the devil's just warped it. Just warp the truth, and that's how you get these pagan these pagan ideas, these pagan myths, even though they all predate Christianity anyway. But that's all, guys. Hope this helped. Um, hit that subscribe button, everyone. We're almost at a thousand. Once we hit a thousand, gonna be giving away some books. You don't want to miss that. I got an ebook coming out, and Davon Mays and I also have a book coming.